I don't believe in God who is sitting up without looking down, or without coming and living with the people, living with the people, sharing with the people, uh, living their miseries, living their happiness. It's only in love that the human race will be able to grow and that a new world, a new world we coming down from heaven will be born. And this is for us Christians the meaning of the suffering, the death and resurrection of Christ. I remember my father all the time talking to us about love. And he say the basics of Christianity is love. And then he said, well, uh, we used to tell him, well, of course, we love each other in the family. What's, so we, we are okay. He said, no, I mean, it's not a big deal. If you want really to be Christians, you have to love the others, especially your enemy. In 63 BCE, the Roman general Pompey had captured Jerusalem and brought to an end 100 years of Jewish independence under the Hasmoneans. Rome chose to rule Palestine through a series of puppet kings whose nationality was local but whose allegiance was to Rome. The most famous of these kings was Herod the Great, who ruled from 37 to 4 BCE. Herod built beautiful cities such as here at Caesarea, which he dedicated to his patron, the Emperor Caesar Augustus. The city was a bastion of Roman power and civilization and proclaimed Herod's acceptance of foreign domination and pagan culture. At the end of the reign of Herod the Great and into a Jewish culture chafing under foreign domination, Jesus of Nazareth was born. Despite the fact that Western civilization divides time by the date of his birth, almost nothing is known about Jesus prior to the start of his ministry around the year 29 of the Common Era. The Synoptic Gospels indicate that the ministry of Jesus began with his baptism in the Jordan River. In a very short ministry that lasted from one to three years, Jesus went about the Jewish towns of Galilee proclaiming the good news of the reign of God in powerful teachings and parables which were rooted in the life experiences of the simple shepherds, farmers, and fishermen Jesus spoke of God's limitless love for humanity, a love which canceled all debts, forgave all sins, healed all wounds, and made all things possible. Jesus called upon his followers to repent, to open their hearts, and to love and forgive one another, because they had been loved and forgiven first by God. Jesus accompanied these teachings with signs and miracles which demonstrated God's healing, saving love. Taken in their entirety, the teachings of Jesus turned the wisdom of the world upside down and called for a transformation in human relationships. Jesus' ministry inevitably drew him to the political and religious maelstrom that was Jerusalem. His popular support and charismatic style were threatening to a nervous Roman administration, while his openness to Gentiles and mingling with undesirables confounded some within the religious leadership. The Romans summarily executed Jesus on a cross and seemingly put an end to his followers' claims that he was the Messiah or the Anointed One of God. Following the execution of Jesus, his disciples were in fear and disarray and then, in their midst, they saw and experienced the risen Jesus. The experience of the resurrected Christ electrified the disciples, and following a comparable experience at Pentecost, they began to fervently proclaim the message of Jesus and his resurrection. The disciples of Jesus and their first followers were all Jews. They understood Jesus within the context of Judaism and Jewish scripture, and they continued to observe Jewish law and ritual. Over time, increasing numbers of Gentiles chose to follow Jesus. This raised a critical question within the early church. Were the Gentile followers of Christ compelled to follow and observe Jewish ritual? The issue was resolved 
through the first council of the church held in Jerusalem in 49 CE. With a few minor exceptions, it was decided to exempt Gentile followers of Jesus from the observance of the Mosaic law. With the Roman destruction of Jerusalem in 70 CE, Jews and Christians alike fled the city. The Christians to pre-existing centers of worship such as Antioch, Ephesus, and Corinth. The next several centuries saw both the gradual spread of Christianity throughout the Roman Empire and the intermittent and frequently savage persecution of Christianity by various Roman emperors. Early in the fourth century, the Emperor Constantine put an end to the persecutions and established Christianity as the religion of the empire. His mother, Helena, traveled to the Roman city built on the rubble of Jerusalem and went about rebuilding it as a Christian city of pilgrimage. Churches and shrines were built throughout Jerusalem and it remained a Christian city through the Byzantine period and up to its capture by Muslims in the 7th century. <laughs>